My name is Joe Morgevich. Um, we have a family farm in Goshen, New York, uh, by the name of Morgevich Produce. Um, I'd be fifth generation, and we farm approximately 300 acres cultivated. We're in the second largest deposit of black dirt, I think, in the nation. So everything we own and farm is above 50% organic matter. Most of it tipping towards like 60 or 70. Uh, and it's, it's beautiful soil for growing consistent, large, bountiful crops. I've noticed, especially in Europe, they're a little more technologically advanced in the agricultural sector. A lot of things are done by machine, computers. I wouldn't say necessarily robots, but a lot more me mechanical harvesting. Um, so one way to kind of get around that was to build a machine um, using some of the same principles that some of the machines out there have. Still using a little bit of hand labor for the bunching process at the moment, but to try to get away or at least increase our harvesting capacity with a mechanical device. I've always had a mechanical inclination. I, I went to Cobble Skill, I graduated from Cornell. Um, so I spent a lot of time researching it and uh, visualizing a kind of machine that I would make. And it seems like right now the, the time's right, the demand's there for a lot of this produce. And it seems like I could get a lot of use out of it. Everything on that machine was fabricated by my own hands. It's a three row because we, we plant kale on a three row bed. We, it's a 68 inch row center and every 68 inches you got three rows. So I built the machine specifically for our spacing. Um, and to try to keep it uniform and between our farms and if I decide to use it somewhere else. It's um, basically two parallel belts that run side by side. In the center they meet and they apply some pressure and they basically scoop up the leaves and cut it once it's once it's grabbed and then sends it up to um, a worker who will then bunch it by hand. So all they have to do is grab it and bunch it and put it in a box. The picking belts themselves are powered by hydraulic motors. I've got two per head and they spin in opposite directions. I've got three blades on it, one for each row. Uh, they're basically weed whacker blades. Um, and they spin right at the bottom, they kind of hover the ground, and as soon as the kale is in the picking belt, it cuts it right away. And then I have individual height cylinders for every picking head, so each head, depending on what the field conditions are, whether there's a rut or a dip in the field, each picking head will stay at the same level of the ground or above the ground, and they operate independently. So that whole, the whole time we're moving along, it's, it's, skimming, right the t it's skimming the top, whatever setting I put it at. And then I control everything from the cab. I've got, I, uh, I wired everything. I, I put all my own switches and cylinder or solenoids and stuff like that, relays. Um, I've got a control box in the cab. I can control every aspect of the machine. So there's not much anyone on the platform has to do other than worry about the crop that's coming up on the belt. At the moment, I've got a plan to have three three guys bunching, or three workers bunching, one per each belt, one per each row. Their only job is to worry about grabbing the bunch and putting a rubber band around it. From there, they toss it to another worker who is just packing the bunches into boxes, and then one more worker to either make boxes or take away the full boxes for the guy that's packing. Um, and probably one other guy to drive a pickup in and out of the field picking up the, the, the boxes that are already harvested because at the moment I don't have a whole lot of platform space to keep entire pallets of empty boxes and full boxes. That is something that I would like to work on this winter, adding another folding platform, uh, possibly hooking a wagon to it. I'm not sure yet. We'll see how the, how the tractor handles everything and how the frame tolerates it. Um, but I'm hoping it becomes a seamless operation, you know, boxes in and out. And then, of course, one, one guy in the tractor. Financial sustainability was probably at the forefront of my mind, at least. This machine has the potential to save us $3,000 a day in labor. As far as crop sustainability, 
We're looking to reduce the tractor impact or the traffic in the field as well. A lot of what we have here is drainage issues, and if you're not familiar with black dirt, it's like a sponge. It's also extremely soft. You can't run heavy equipment on it, and it does not really tolerate narrow wheels from pickups. So if we can reduce the amount of vehicles in the field and just reduce it down to one tractor on tracks that is set up for the maximum surface area and you know the least amount of compaction or sinking as possible, that's also something we're concerned about because a lot of the fields do take a beating from just in and out traffic of workers. Dollar amount all said and done, I think I'm around 24,000. The grant took care of about 15 of that and the rest of it has you know, been out of my pocket or the farms um, just to keep things going because it is something we need. Time-wise, I've probably got about 1,000, 1,500 hours into it. Um, just me working on it, just, you know, my own, my own thoughts, my own ways, methods of doing things. I don't have, I don't have a full production shop, but I get into a groove when I'm making a lot of different parts. Um, Cause that's what a lot of it is on this machine. A lot of it's repetition, especially between the three heads. I'm excited to see what it's gonna do with the full crew on the back. 